In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly assemble an H1C and H1E turbo. I'll show you all the common mistakes that people make so you can avoid, avoid them yourself. And I'll also provide you a link to the rebuild kit in the description, which is the same kit that we use in our rebuilds. Here's what the turbo looks like with normal shaft play. This is after we completely assembled the turbo with oil in it. So yours may have a little more shaft play than what's shown here. But the key to note is that the compressor wheel should nearly hit the housings, but not hit the housings without oil. First and off, you will need to clean the bearing housing really well. And then when you go to put these C-clips in, make sure that the rounded edge is facing the bearing. This helps prevent the bearing from scarring up and wearing out against the C-clip. Press the open end of the front seal over the collar. This will help it prevent from bending the seal when you install it. I always clean all the individual pieces before I assemble the turbo and then I will insert the bearing. Make sure you have the C-clips behind the bearing before you install the bearing, otherwise the bearing will go directly back inside of the bearing housing. After inserting the bearing, you can insert, insert the snap ring or the C-clip, whichever you want to call it, and make sure that the rounded edge is facing down towards the bearing. Use a pick to pry back the C-clip to make sure that it's correctly seated inside of the groove. Next, make sure you have the clip inside the back side for the rear bearing, and then install the rear bearing, and then install the second clip to retain the bearing so it's caged in correctly. Make sure you compress the clip in such a way that it flies out of the bearing housing and lands on the floor so that you have to clean it again. Compress the C-clip and make sure it snaps in correctly and then be sure to pry it back to make sure it properly sits in the groove. I cut this bearing housing for the HX35 thrust collar because I had an extra laying around. The H1C thrust collar is a little bit smaller so the HX35 thrust collar will provide more durability over the H1C's original thrust collar. However, it's not completely necessary and Alone, the thrust bearing upgrade is the only necessary thing to have for the H1C, especially for a stock build. But for a performance build, it's really important to have the thicker thrust collar if you can. If you want that collar with your rebuild kit, you will have to contact us directly at turbolabamerica at gmail.com. We normally don't include the HX35 thrust collar in the H1C kit because the bearing housing does have to be cut for the collar to work and we'd rather just not have to deal with people sending the kit back saying that it doesn't fit because the larger collar does require the bearing housing to be cut for it to work. Use red Loctite on these screws and tighten them down with a T20 Torx bit socket. If you put the oil deflector in front of the front collar, it will cause the turbo to lock up when assembled and also it will permanently damage the oil deflector to cause it to lock up once you do that. So be sure to not mess this part up. Locate the open end of the seal on the collar and be sure to watch that as it compresses into the front seal plate so that you know it goes in evenly and correctly. Spin the collar so that you can notice that there is no binding once assembled. If you have a binding issue, most likely you bent the front seal and it needs to be replaced. Install the oil deflector in the pocket of the bearing housing. If it sits outside the pocket a little bit, it will cause a binding issue and the turbo will not spin correctly. When you put the black o-ring in, you can oil it to help it stick to the seal plate. You will need the o-ring to stick to the seal plate so that when you put the plate onto the bearing housing, it won't fall out. Put the front plate directly on the bearing housing just like you see in this video with the bearing housing facing up. If you don't do it this way then the oil deflector will fall out of the bearing housing and that will cause it the turbo to lock up if the oil deflector loses its place inside the pocket on the bearing housing. Use blue Loctite on these bolts to make sure that they don't come out. The blue Loctite's designed for aluminum. It helps prevent the threads from stripping when removed also. Use a eight millimeter hex point socket or six point socket so that you can tighten these bolts down correctly without having any problems. Usually the 12 point socket on these bolts just doesn't work. So just make sure you use the six point socket. 
The rear seal installs the same way as the front seal with the open gap going over the shaft first. The most common mistake that I see that people do when working on their own turbos is that they'll slam the shaft inside the bearing housing, not really paying attention where the heat shield is or that the seal is not properly aligned. To properly align the seal and install it correctly, you have to spin the shaft to seat the seal and then it will pop right in. The torque spec of the compressor nut is 8.5 foot-pounds or 75 inch-pounds. Since I balance my assembly, I do have to realign up the shaft and compressor wheel where I balanced it. If you have a six point compressor nut, you can mark the compressor wheel, compressor nut, and the shaft to try and retain the original balance. If your turbo has a 12 point nut, then the positions of the wheels does not matter because it was just a component balance turbo. I will leave links to the parts that I used in the description box on this video. If you thought this video was helpful and you'd like to see more videos on education for turbo rebuilds, you can always subscribe to this channel.